All right, welcome friends. Welcome to Coach's Corner, the best part of the stream, the best part of our community where we share a lot of knowledge and really we develop to become better players. Uh, this is, it'll be a quick, quick Coach's Corner here, but it's a very special one. It's a very, very important one. Um, Coach's Corner, it's it's why I stream. It's, it's why I do what I do because I, I love doing it. I love imparting knowledge and experience and mistakes and funny jokes on, you know, onto you guys. And see you guys learn from them and, and develop as players and I guess as people as well. Um, so I have a new blog posted as well. Uh, these blogs will be a little bit more frequent, a little bit shorter, uh, with the longer blogs being infrequent. Uh, but I want to talk a little about here about us being noobs. We're all noobs at some point. What keeps you motivated? What keeps you going? Now, I mean, a little bit of motivation for you guys, and this is, this makes me so proud, uh, you know, seeing a lot of the feedback here uh, from you guys. Um, you know, just recently in chat, before I even started streaming, uh, Sparty, or Skyfall110 says to me, Sparty, good news, I finally got into a Mythic Guild, they just started uh, about our 7 out of 7, a Heroic and 2 out of Mythic, thanks to your advice. It's little things like that, that's what keeps me motivated, and that's, you know, to finish my stream as well, but that's what keeps me going. That's why I do what I do. I mean, a lot of you guys lurk in and don't chat and don't, you know, and that's fine, totally fine. But you're still supporting the stream. You're, you know, you guys message me in games some days, and it's like, hey, you know, I, I got into a guild thanks to you. I, uh, you know, I ranked really high. I've improved so much, and that's why we do what we do. So uh, to start off here, and you know, I'll just m mention a little bit on the blog. Um, I mean, any of you guys are capable raiders. Every single one of you can be a potential mythic raider. The only thing that's stopping you is just not trying. When we do our raids with our sub raids, for example, I encourage you guys, ask questions. If you're ever unclear, ask. When Sparty does a ready check, if you are not 110% clear, don't hit ready. I don't mind explaining the entire encounter, your role, what your class should be doing the entire time. Like for five minutes, however long it takes until you are crystal clear. And that is my job as you know, as a raid leader, first of all, and number two, as uh, running you guys through the sub runs, or viewer runs, or whatever. Uh, but I've seen so many of you guys, and a lot of you guys are here in chat. Um, you guys have gone from these LFR zeros or PVPers, people that have never raided before, to flex raiders. When we start doing flex raids, uh, last expansion, to normal raiders, to heroic raiders, and now to mythic raiders. Um, you know, another great example here is Radiance, uh, which is plays a shaman named Chasmatic. He was this little, like, this, this, this little, he's not even a kid, he's a little, you know, he's a little shit disturber uh, on my stream, but he's developed a ton. He was this, you know, this giant noob of a shaman eating pizza pockets, or, he, like, every time we would do sub raids, he would constantly go AFK heating up a pizza or something, or pizza was being delivered. You know, the typical Warcraft player. And I've seen him develop now as a player. Like I, I'm proud of what he's done, how he's accomplished, uh, how much he's accomplished. He's now in a mythic raiding guild. Uh, it's fantastic. Like it's you know, I could be his dad. You know, I'm proud enough to be his dad, but I'm not. Thankfully, thankfully, I am not. Um, so seeing you guys improve like that, like Shazmatic here, like a lot of you guys that have gotten guilds, uh, seeing Griff, right, seeing Baleful on Sargeras uh, improve that much. Uh, seeing M's Guild obliterate, seeing them grow, it, I mean, it's it's really rewarding, and that's why I stream. So you guys have developed as players. You guys are, I mean, more raid aware, you know how to critique yourselves, and it's a proud feeling. Um, you guys have learned to use resources. We had a whole segment on Warcraft logs. I expected to spend, you know, an hour and a half on Warcraft logs. I spent over three hours going through all of Warcraft logs for you guys, how to analyze your parses, uh, how to check your uptimes, how to compare yourselves, how to compare different parses uh, within each other. So you guys have done so much. So it's, I mean, it's a huge pat on the back for you guys. Um, you know, anybody can be a capable raider. I've seen, I, I've had 15 year old, you know, kids, teenagers in my guild. They were capable raiders years ago. Some of my raiders that are, are these around right now? No, Marksman's not online. Um, he was a, uh, a mage hunter at some point, but he applied when he was 15. That was 10 years ago, now he's 25. And, you know, he's one of our best hunters. You know, one of the most reliable players I have on my roster by far, when he's not screwing up organics. <coughs> Excuse me. Another great example is, there's a 70-year-old, and I mentioned this pretty often on my stream here, there's a 70-year-old grandmother 
that was a heroic mythic raider. And um, here is the link to, to her little thing right here. Uh, this seven year, I'm going to post for you guys in chat here in a second, but it's also linked on the blog. Uh, this 70 year old grandmother wields legendary and leads her guild. She was a heroic raider, mythic raider in uh, during Dragon Soul. She's 70. Like, she's 70, guys. She's not, I mean, hopefully she doesn't break a hip, but she's raid leading people. Uh, I don't know her raid leading style, but she was pretty damn successful too. Uh, what was her name? Her name was Marthazen. Here she is topping the meters back in Dragon Soul. Um, you know, huge. Like, it's, it's huge. Anybody can be a capable raider. There's nothing stopping you. She's 70. Imagine what her reaction times are. Slow enough to, you know... Well, quick, clearly quick enough to run out of fire, right? If this 70-year-old grandmother can run out of fire, run out of void zones, mash her buttons to top the meters... Why can't you? You totally can. I'm sure she's had, you know, 10 years of practice when she started when she was 60, but that adds up. It makes you a much better player. Yeah, if she can kill heroic bosses, why can't you? You totally can. I've seen so many of you guys improve and do it. Just get in there. There's a whole process, you know, you, you work your way up from LFRs or normals or flex raids, doing challenge modes, doing proving grounds, eventually, and you develop your skills, you, you hone your, uh, your raid awareness, because it is a learned skill, and you become a much better raider. 70 is new 29. <laughs> sure it is, exactly. Uh, there, there's been so many things. Uh, another great example is the guy I hosted today, No Hands Ken. He's a quadriplegic plays Diablo, plays Warcraft, has done raiding. He raids with Nocturnal uh, Lunacy, I believe. He was doing RBGs, and he still is right now. Feel free to follow him. Uh, Twitch No Hands Ken. Fantastic. Like, it's inspirational what No Hands Ken is doing. Like, and he uses uh, this little device that he puts into his mouth, and depending on which way he shifts it and breathes in, breathes out, how he moves his character. He's not keyboard turning. Like, he's on-click moving, but it's, it's absolutely incredible what the human body and what the, the human mind can accomplish. Is Sparty about to get that age? No, I'm not going to get 70, not yet, but maybe soon. Uh, so check him out, guys. I was hosting him today. Uh, they're doing a charity run for a, a great charity. Do it. It's awesome. Why not? Uh, another great example here. So, I, I mean, I've had all kinds of players in my guild. I've had, you know, the 15-year-olds, the old people. Um, I've had, you know... What I've had colorblind, I mean, colorblind's not a real terrible disability, right? Uh, a lot of guys are colorblind, or a decent amount of guys are colorblind. I have a colorblind raiders, and it does affect you because you can't see things as well as a non colorblind person can. So we had to make adjustments for raiders that were colorblind. And, you know, it took quite a bit of adjusting, especially on Dark Animus uh, Heroic back in Throne of Thunder. That was quite the boss. Uh, I've had players in my guild that were colorblind, deaf. Yeah, I've had deaf raiders. A mute raider, which could not speak. But a guild and a raid can accommodate all those things. I mean, you'd be surprised. Yeah, they can't hear, but there's raid commands. You have macros. You make those accommodations for a potentially good player. And there's been a ton of them that are heroic raiders. Whether you have one arm, and one of my raiders only had one arm because he had took a lot of nerve damage after um, a really bad motorcycle. He played with a pedal and one hand on his mouse. And that was it. Or one hand on his keyword. I can't remember what it was. Um, yeah, real talk. He has me have to play. You better play Warcraft One, One La Sombra. Yeah, for sure. Uh, another great example here. Now this one is is really awesome. Um, there was this is a quick little story, quick little anecdote for you guys. Um, this is. Uh, so this was regarding a, a shaman, um, was played by a British Army soldier, Ben Shaw, who while serving in Iraq, was involved in an incident with a roadside bomb in Basra. He suffered multiple shrapnel wounds and had to have both eyes surgically removed. Despite this, uh, Hexu, the shaman, has accepted many challenges, including Warcraft raiding. So he was a raider while being blind. He could not see. Well, he had his friend, Davidian. Uh, Davidian was a Death Knight, uh, played by a Scotsman named Owen, and he was his in-game guide. He used a series of macros, communication, uh, voice commands, 
both on his friend's machine, his his blind friend's machine, and his own to help him perform DPS or move and follow him and, and that kind of stuff. And he was a pretty successful raider in his own right, a blind person. Could you imagine, you know, trying to DPS, trying to move around, and you can't see anything? You know, you can hear game sounds, you can hear somebody communicating to you, but that's another hugely successful, uh, hugely successful story here. I'm going to link it for you guys uh, as well. There, there's that. Uh, there's this one. And of course, they rewarded, uh, not rewarded, but they, Blizzard, gave uh, Davidian an in-game item because, like, it's such a touching story of what one friend does for another. Now, uh, they gave him two items. One item was uh, Hexus Amplifying Helm. Uh, and this is really touching, a little note in there. So this is Hexus, the, the, the blind um, player. And in the note it says, A man with a friend is never without vision. That gets the tears going right away. And uh, Davidian's all-seeing eyes, which was the person that was uh, helping his friend out, sharp enough to see for two men. Now that is incredibly touching. That, that, just, that gets you right in the feels. Right in the feels. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna use your quotes. Um, but there's so much we can do. I mean, that's the community. That's friends coming together to become better raiders. Uh, you know, a little while ago, I interviewed Shuttle from Blood Legion. You guys know him as this awesome paladin. Um, you know, one of the top U.S. guilds for a long time. And we interviewed him uh, based on how much work is necessary to become a mythic raider. Uh, he jumped from, you know, a 700 rank guild to the number one rank guild at the time. And, you know, they've been wildly successful. He's been such a, a great influential paladin, uh, both to me and in the paladin community as well. But you guys have often seen his spreadsheets here of how many alts he has to run. It takes a lot of effort and a lot of man hours. But you don't get that good at anything, at playing the piano, guitar, playing chess, League of Legends, Hello Kitty Island Adventure, Pokemon, whatever, uh, without a lot of practice, without a ton of practice. And he clearly, uh, at that level, you need lots lots of hours in your healing characters or whatever. Um... Uh, you know, and when you are wiping to a boss, and I always tell you guys this on stream, when you are wiping to a boss, you always see the improvement. How much better was that last attempt? For those of you that were watching our, our most recent Mythic Imperator attempts, we're slowly getting better and better and better and better. And, you know, very soon we'll have that Imperator kill. But you guys see our progression like you would any other regular guild. Um, I mean, the biggest thing to take away that, from that is never stop improving. You know, just... How can you do better for next time? Take every wipe, take every kill as a learning opportunity. You go through your logs, what could I do better next time? How could I take less damage? How can I maximize my healing, maximize my DPS? Can I use my cooldowns better? You know, could you have made better movement choices? You know, when I heal myself, and I often comment on my own healing, I know when I've made one mistake with a healing rotation, when I've chosen the wrong spell, a less efficient spell, uh, a flash of light uh, over a um, an infusion of light, holy light, right? I see all those little things. Um, I mean, we have our community of gamers and Warcraft players. You know, we all start off somewhere. We all start off as noobs. And now, uh, I want you guys, for those of you in stream here, I want you guys to sort of think about a noob moment. I'm going to share a few with you guys that you posted for us back in September when I posed this question. Now, I've obviously you know, blocked up the names, um, but here I will link some of these for you guys, or uh, read some of these out for you guys. Uh, now, Christian says, and I'm going to read these out because these are, are quite funny, you know, we were such noobs, you know, whether you were naive or, you know, or ignorant or new to the game. For some people, this is their first MMO. For some other people, like, it's our third MMO. We've been doing MMOs for 13, 15, 20 years, right? Or games like MMOs. Uh, he says, when I was playing a hunter, I was killing mobs, ran out of arrows, then I leveled till 20-ish or something like that. Some guy asked me why I was meleeing all the uh, mobs instead of using my bow. And then I was like, I'm out of arrows, man. He led me to a guy to buy more arrows. Good times in Burning Crusade. That was BC. You know, we had noobs. BC was part of the pinnacle of a lot of raiding. You know, some of the hardest raiding was during BC. But we were tons of, like, we were big noobs back then. Jonathan here says, uh, I thought Unholy was a healer when Wrath of Lich King released. <laughs> so I healed my ghoul all the time. It took me a lot of times to level my first torn Unholy Death Knight. Yeah, uh, with the ghoul doing all the damage, it must have taken an eternity. 
Wow. Uh, Dean here says, My best new moment from TBC was leveling as a rent. I thought that Righteous Fury was a DPS increase because I didn't know about Threat at all. He had no idea what Threat was, what TPS was. Uh, a friend sent me straight, and now I'm a guild main tank and have tanked for several guilds for a few expansion packs. Started off as a noob, made these giant noob mistakes, um, and now he's been main tanking for a guild for a long-ass time. It's incredible. Uh, another one here, Eric. Uh, no, this one's Jordan. Once I saved up three gold to buy a white item from a blacksmith because it was name was cool. A lot of us have done that. A lot of us have, you know, have done that thing like saving up your gold for a white item uh, because you didn't know about greens, you didn't know about upgrades. Like, I've got a rusty short... I remember doing this in EverQuest. I, uh, I had a rusty short sword as on my high elf paladin, and I killed so many bats. So many bats until I was able to afford a sharpened short sword or something silly like that, you know, as a paladin as well. Uh, here's another good one from Eric. Being a level 10 while a couple level 60s horde came to ransack my area, so I'm clearly a PvP server, for those of you that PvP. Uh, here comes this little lowly level 10, first time playing the game. A bunch of level 60s are ransacking, I don't know, Goldshire. And here comes this level 10. Uh, and he's uh, he says to the rest, you know, he's thinking to himself, I'm going to change the tide of this battle. Just myself. The NPCs will rally to my cause. And, of course... Once the Horde noticed him, he was squashed like a crippled insect, is what he says. Uh, Martin here. When explaining tactics on TeamSpeak during Dragon Soul 10, I said, Melee stand here. Range stand here. And one of his mages replied, Hey guys, am I a, a ranged or a melee? Like, it, it's a funny, like, a, it's a funny noob moment there. Like, how does a mage not know whether he's ranged or melee? But you know what? We all start off somewhere. Like, what do you do? Do you tease the crap out of this guy? Do you make fun of him? Oh man, you're so dumb. How could you not know? Well, just tell them. You know, help them out. Hey, you're arranged because you, uh, you're you a caster. So casters, warlocks, shadow priests, uh, mages, boomkins, whatever, those are ranged classes or, um, or hunters as well. And you explain to them the difference. And like, oh, well, that's fantastic. Uh, this one's from Jennifer. The first time I entered the game, my friend took me to Westfall and not knowing how to get back... I just logged out. He then told me I could, of course, use my health, my Hearthstone, and I had no idea what he was talking about. I honestly can't remember the first time I used my Hearthstone. I know I played the beta uh, back in 2004, September. I I was a huge noob back then. I mean, I had a lot of um, EverQuest experience, so I sort of I knew the gist. You know, I knew the social dynamics. Um, I played the beta, so I did learn a lot. But I was still a noob. I was still a healer in Molten Core, wearing wielding a two-handed weapon trying to heal with Flash of Light and whatever other spells we have. I was trying to be a Ret Healer, Cleanse Bot, which is sort of what Paladins were, you know, a big support class with 5-minute blessings, and that was super lame. Super, super lame. Uh, Tittle Pony says, I used to think it was Furry Warrior, not Fury. <laughs> I think you're playing the wrong game, Tittle Ponage, if it's a Furry Warrior. Yep. Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, don't forget Mongoose Bite and Aspect of the Monkey. Yeah, those were those melee hunters, for sure. Uh, I used to skip quests that made me go underwater because I, I didn't know how to... <laughs> this is from Lurk of the Great. I used to skip quests that made me go underwater because I did not know how to swim. I uh, You know what? I made a similar um, mistake back in EverQuest. I, my computer was so bad, I was on a dial-up connection. And by the time my character zoned, because they were you know just major zones, not a, a, a big world like this, by the time... Uh, and I guess you could sort of apply it to uh, to the game right now. Basically, here's a quick analogy. My The ship went from uh, Menethil, right? It goes from Menethil, and it goes to Barons or wherever it goes, or Darnassus. Basically, my connection to my computer was so bad that I, I logged on the boat, or I was on the boat, and um, the zoning took so long that by the time my screen popped up like when I was back in game the boat was leaving again and my friend was yelling at me what are you doing what are you doing he, he didn't know I was zoning so long he says just jump off the boat jump off the boat and basically I jumped off the boat as it was zoning to the big ocean area and I swam around in the ocean forever sweating bullets hoping that my level 12 character wouldn't die I didn't want him to drown because I spent hours hours and hours and hours leveling this character back in EverQuest you could lose all your gear if you did not recover your corpses 
So I was just terrified. Um, Poulet says he's a noob here, but proud to be a new one. Yeah, but you improve. And I've seen Poulet here, 455, go from, you know, a pretty noob hunter, and he's developed. He's learned so much. I saw him in his very first normal raid, and DPS went up. He talked to other hunters, and that's the biggest thing. You need to talk to other players that are better than you. I talk to uh, the Dells, the, the Verstas, the Eladias, the Shuttles. I use my Holy Paladin resources to become a better player myself. And obviously, I've become a much better player uh, through um, through the stream. Because you guys critique me very often. You know, things that I don't notice, people notice. It's very easy to critique a player when you're not in their shoes, uh, not understanding what's going through the mind. But do I take it personally? No, of course not. I take it as a way to improve myself. And it's totally fine to critique yourself. Um, my first tune I made it on a low pop server because I thought it'd be easier to find the grading guild. Oh, how wrong you were! Right. Uh, I remember one, I once got stuck in uh, RFC, and my Hearthstone had a one day cooldown, and I didn't want to die. I waited for two hours for for a GM, not knowing if I just ran in as a ghost and I spawned at the entrance. You know what? We and you have so much pride in your character, you have so much invested that you don't want to lose it. And that's how you get attached to those guys. My first raid, I made my guild disband. Now I'm on Mythic, and they're still on Normal. Oh, man. When I started playing Warcraft back in 2005, I didn't know what a hot was. I used to spam Rejuve as a Druid and got no instant heals. Yeah, and we learned, right? Now I've got a couple more here. Uh, and this is from my guildies. So you know my guild as Mythic Raiders. We've been around for 10 years. You know, we've killed all the content. We've killed all the bosses. But we were also noobs. I mean, we were all noobs at some point. Uh, I'm going to read a couple more for you guys before I finish this noob section. Now, uh, here's one from Ariana. You guys know Ariana, our Death Knight. Uh, she's been around for a while. Now, Ariana, how is she a noob? Well, Ariana says, I made it to level 50 on my first warrior before I realized there was more you could do than auto attack to fight NPCs. Dear God, leveling was slow until then. Sure was, Ariana, sure was. Uh, Dimster, this was one of our uh, recent Warlock apps in, in Siege of Orgrimmar. He says, I was halfway into Siege of Orgrimmar normal before I realized that Soul Slim could be as a battle res. Okay, a new Warlock moment for me. I don't play a Warlock, but I have an alt. Um, it took me until Wrath of the Lich King to find out that pets had a stay button. This was mid TOC 25. I asked the Warlocks, how are you getting your, your imps to stay there? And the entire raid bursts out laughing at me. The guild leader, the raid leader. You just tell your pet to stay. There's a button. Yeah, that was a giant facepalm moment for me. Uh, this one's uh, this one's pretty good. This one's from Eloria. You guys know her as our priest. Uh, she was a noob, you know, probably until she joined our guild. Uh, she's playing vanilla Warcraft. She's on Norganon, which is a brand new server. And there weren't any max levels on it yet. Her first character was a rogue. Warcraft was her first MMO, because she was a noob, right? And she pretty much knew nothing about how the, anything worked. Like many of you guys. There was a guy in Karanos trying desperately to sell a green dagger for six gold. He whispered um, her finally and told her it would be a great weapon for level six. That's awesome. But it's six gold. How are you going to get that? So Aloria tells him, I only have two gold. He said, that's fine. You know what? Well, we'll, we'll make it work. Um, so she took it. Many levels later, so she's level 6, guys, she bought this level 6 dagger. Many levels later in Hinterlands, Hinterlands was like a level 48 zone. Uh, she was killing the crap out of this troll mob, like she was stabbing the crap out of it. And the guy runs up to her and just watches her for a second. He whispered me after looking at me for a bit and asked me how long I've been using that dagger. I had no idea there was an auction house, she says, or that you could upgrade your gear as you leveled. He gave me 10 gold and told me where to, get, to find the auction house. I upgraded. I don't know how you guys could stomach playing Warcraft and just grinding things all day long, unless you were EverQuest players or you like those Korean MMOs. Wow. Um, what is another really good one here? When I first started... Okay, this one's from Odir, uh, one of our friends of the guild. When I first started out on my human rogue, I saved up as much money as I could to buy the cats from the cat vendor just outside of Northshire. At the time, I thought they were the hunter pets. They were not. They were not. Um, here's another good one. And, and this is really true to a lot of you guys. This is Thorgals. Thorgals was one of our best tanks ever. In the history of Death Jesters, one of my best tanks. 
Uh, he says, my first tune ever was a druid. And I had no idea what these stats were, so I geared him based on how he looked and if I liked it or not. Obviously, it doesn't matter how much DPS or healing you do, or how much damage you take. All that matters is how awesome you look while you do it. And now we have transmogs. Okay, uh, here's another really good one from Schomburg. Okay, this is Schomburg. Uh, you guys know him as Sean Boner. Uh, so, Schomburg, before he made his first character, he added up all the stats like strength, intellect, like stamina, spirit, agility to determine what class and spec would be the strongest out of them all. His first character was a Tauren Druid, based on the OP stats at level 1, uh, which he got to level 4 and then swapped to a Dwarf Paladin, which he still plays now. Did get up to max level, or I also didn't get a, the max ground level mount speeding to level seven because that was so fun times. Uh, okay, now okay, this is the, one more here, one last one here for my guildies, and there's a bunch more. Like my guildies had a whole long thread about these. What's the point exactly? Word exactly. Um, so this is Kex Caliber. This is one of the the golden ones here. My first character in vanilla was a warrior named LXX Diablo XXL. I don't know. Uh, much like Dexter, he saved up all his hard-earned hard copper to buy that awesome white gear from the vendors. However, after he... <laughs> Thanks for stopping real, Kyle. Much appreciated and welcome. Thanks for the support. Uh, so, he bought all the, this white gear from the vendors. However, after he had bought all his new items and quested, and by quested he means died many, many times over... Uh, he couldn't afford to repair because he couldn't kill anything with his broken gear. So he died so many times, couldn't repair. Well, now his gear is all broken. He can't kill anything to repair it. So he says, that character still sits at level 9 on Muradin with his broken gear and no gold to repair it. He told his friend uh, his experience, the guy who introduced him to the game, and his friend laughed. Just laughed and laughed and laughed and told him, make a character on Stormrage. I'll hook you up with 10 gold and get going. So, we were all noobs at some point. A lot of you guys have shared these uh, with us as well. Uh, let me read a couple more here. Uh, I leveled my first priest up to 40 using only wands because I had taken improved wands talent and thought it was just what I was supposed to be doing. Makes sense. That's a very logical thing to do. Right? Wands, wand spec, priest. Priest use wands. That makes all my spells better, right? I mean, to be fair, Warcraft wasn't that noob-friendly. Not as it is now. Now it is much easier to learn the game. You know, it's not as complicated as it used to be. There weren't so many hidden little features that um, that there were back in vanilla NBC. It's much easier. They're, they've got a great tutorial system now. Uh, lots of the hints pop up, and it's fantastic. It is a, it's, Blizzard did a great job. Um, good. Now where's my little blog here? Uh, so, I mean, we were all noobs at some point. You have to start somewhere. And, you know, we were all ignorant or naive or whatever, but there was that person that helped us along the way. Like that person that helped Aloria, or that guy that helped Kexcalibur, or that streamer that helped you guys. There was always that person to help you, and, you know, I, I don't make fun of you guys. I tease you a little bit here, but you guys tease me right back when I do something really silly. And it's totally fine. Um, but we have somebody helping us out, right? So what I want you guys to do is help build that community. Help that noob out there somewhere. Help your friend that has no idea what they're doing. You know, they're just, they're doing pet battles all day long. Show them how much more there is to this game because there's so much raiding and PvP and professions and gold making and there's tons of streamers that show all that stuff that are great at it. You know, show them how much more there is in Warcraft. And again, you know, look at players that are better than you. Um, you know, I've... I mean, there's nothing stopping you guys from being, again, good players, or amazing players, or getting to that realm for a skill, nothing at all. You put in the hard work, and you'll get it done. Um, you know, me personally, you know, from a real-life perspective, I've, I climbed a mountain back last summer, but I'm terrified of heights. I'm absolutely terrified. I got to the top of this mountain, I got to the very top, I sat down and said, I'm not moving. And the entire time, you know, my girlfriend at the time, and now fiancé, Driez, uh, was with me, and I'm thinking in my head, I'm so embarrassed. I'm going to need a helicopter to get me down. I, I, I can't do this. But eventually I mustered the strength, you know, and I tried not to wet myself as I, I walked down this giant mountain. i terrified still. I'm never going to do it again. I've taught people to swim that were terrified of putting their faces in the water. I got them to float and swim and kick and be comfortable 
in the water and trust their bodies to let them float. You got to put in the work. You got to trust. You got to put in the effort. And I mean, that's what I want you guys to get out of this blog and Kosha's Corner. That if you want something bad enough, get it. Start somewhere, obviously as noobs, or you know enough about the game. We'll just keep improving. You know, what is your goal? What keeps you motivated in game? What keeps you playing? And I'll, there were some comments here in chat. Uh, you know, I, I've lost the desire to play Warcraft. Uh, you know, I watch Twitch sometimes. I watch your stream. You help motivate me sometimes. But what motivates you? Why? I love what I do. You think I? You think every day I log on to a Mythic raid and it's fantastic? Some days, and you know, a lot of my guildies are watching right now. It's hard to log on. I just don't want to log. Like I've had a long day at work. We raid four days a week. It's hard to log on for another full night of wiping. You know you're not close to a kill, but you need to put in the time. Your guild needs to learn. They need to learn uh, the muscle memory of that encounter because it is again you know, the same encounter over and over and over, and learn the intricacies of it. It's hard to log on sometimes, and it's hard to motivate yourselves. But you do it for the team. You do it for the glory of raiding. You know because that feeling. And you guys have seen my uh, my celebrations at the end of some of my kills. And every bit of frustration and, you know, it's like getting yourself out of bed in the morning. Every bit of it is worth it. It is absolutely worth it. I love it. You know, I love that feeling of finally downing that boss. For those of you that do PvP, you know, finally getting Gladiator rank after, you know, all those arenas that you do and all the effort that you put in there. It's such a huge accomplishment. You do it for the feels. Why do I stream? To see you guys improve. Because the feeling of seeing you guys improve and the success stories that you guys tell me, that's what keeps me motivated to stream. That's why I do Coach's Corners. That's why I keep playing the game. I've been trying to quit this game since AQ40. I've been trying to quit, and every, t every tier, every expansion, I say this will be my last one. I'm done after this. I'm done. I'm done. Just, and then just one more. Just, just one more. Just let's do a little bit more for the guild. Let's do a little bit more for the stream. What more can I do? You know, now we have, we've developed such a huge community, and people are learning and getting better. We have so much more to offer, right? And obviously you can't do without people that help support you. You know, I have Midas and Whammo, which are like two of my biggest supporters. Um, you know, give them a title, some community coordinators or something. You know, I, there's no way the stream would be as effective as it you know, would be without that support staff. Um, you know, same thing with my guild. There's no way the guild would be as effective without my officers. I've tried to guild lead by myself, raid lead, back in vanilla, and you burn out quick. You get frustrated, you know, you get cranky, very cranky, like you're hangry all the time, and you snap at people, but have a good support system. It makes your life a lot easier. You know, there, there's no way we'd be, you know, as good as we are uh, without all this. Thanks for the team. <laughs> thanks, Zinquandan. Thanks a lot for the team. Uh, thanks for the tip. Sparty, you won't go on Warcraft. Warcraft will eventually quit on you in the future. I, you want to, I want to keep playing it for as long as possible, right? As long as I can, as long as I have something to offer. Um, you know, I don't play it for the amazing storyline that it has to offer, or the really cool bosses. Sometimes they're really cool bosses. But I'm here to, you know, to see you guys improve. You know, I, I get a lot of happiness out of seeing my friends happy. That's where I derive it from. The adrenaline and the insane amount of heartbeats you have at the time knowing you're about to kill a boss, you have been progressing on for a week or plus is crazy, plus some people don't get it. They have to experience a rivalry. They have to understand that, you know, when you're when you're so close to a boss kill, your heart gets goes beating so quick. And you'll see that on Imperator, when we're on the Chogal phase and we're really close. One of my friend just whispered me a couple minutes ago that he wiped at 5% on Chogal. That's a kill. That's like another 30 seconds you got the boss down. What else? Do it for the vine, that's it. I've done all the bosses from Wrath now, memorize for people who can't do fights. Exactly, man. Uh, there, there's so much that you guys can do and become better players. But tell me, what motivates you guys on stream here, those of you that are here? What motivates you? What keeps you playing still? What is your goal? What keeps you motivated? You know, is it the glory of the pet battles? You know, is it. Like midgets having 400 plus level 25 pets. I don't want to do that ever. Is it someone like Darnath who, you know, has all these alts, uh, gears them up through LFR, is, is our fishing master? You know, what are your goals in Warcraft? That's what you have to strive to. If you're bored of the game, that's fine. Everybody gets bored. I get bored too. Sometimes you need a break. Sometimes you need something else to do. Whether you play an alt or work on archaeology, work on achievements, you know, try PvP. 
have fun in Ashran. Uh, do some raiding. There's so much this game. Three sick. I play work because I have friends that play. Those friends, the things you you uh, the, the bonds you make, that's what makes it. I, there was a, I tweeted this a little while ago here, uh, where people are selling their statues. I have a statue coming to me. You know, it's being mailed to me. Um, but people are selling their statues on eBay's. All right, sorry, on eBay. But guys, these statues are selling what two hundred, three hundred dollars, whatever. This statue is a physical manifestation of the ten years that you've been playing the game. Don't sell your memories. It's just two hundred bucks. Like it's. I mean, if you're really short on money, I, I guess. But you've spent over two thousand dollars on sub fees. You're not going to recoup your cost with a little statue. It's a memory. It's limited. I'm never going to sell my statue ever. You know, it'll be on my fireplace mantle in my my eventual you know big house when I have kids and stuff. And this, this is you know, these are the friends. These are the families I've made. So. Uh, the store line and raids is why Iza raids here. The love of the game from C.S. Sanders. Raiding with friends every week. Teabag is exactly. I would not raid at all if I hated the people that I raided with. I enjoy it. We have a lot of fun. We, you know, we're frustrated sometimes when we're wiping on stuff, but it's the friends. You know, I'm in a lucky position where I'm able to. Um, choose the people that I raid with because I'm able like I, I, I sit down on the interviews I accept their applications and I know it's a really weird thing saying I um, you know I, I choose who I raid with well like I choose my friends choose people that will be in the guild um, and I guess you recruit your friends but ultimately you want to make sure that people um, you know are having fun in the guild right because if you're not having fun um, if you're Rating for the sake of rankings, and if that's what's important to you, then do it. But remember, you guys pay $15 a month for this game, and it is a great investment because you can play as many hours as you want compared to anything else. Um, do what you do. I mean, do what you love doing. I have, so Willie Finn says, I have no friends to play with, but I would guess my goal is to have a group of people that I know and care with whom to play with. Come on, Willie Finn, you've got us right here. We are your friends. I see you in stream chat every day saying hello, or whenever I see you. I know you, Willie Finn. Come play with us. You know, come do LFRs with us, dungeons with us. Uh, somebody asked me earlier, hey, can you come to Imperator Normal? I, I said, you know, I would love to, but I'm just prepping Coach's Corner. Ask me when I'm not busy. People sometimes ask me, hey, can you help me with uh, Leroy in dungeons, the Opera Black Rock Spire? Yeah, sure. So I go help them. Don't be afraid to ask me, or people here in chat. We have our forums as well. You know, build that community. We're friends here. Play together. Why not? You think I'm too good to play with you guys? No, that's just stupid. We're friends. That's it. 